All right. Um, so in this video, Mrs. Conway is going to be going over your review packet for your polynomials test. Um, first page, we're going to look at some properties. Um, for each of the graphs, we are going to graph the function, label turning points, and x-intercepts, identify the properties listed, solutions, and write as a product of linear factors. So for number one, you are going to take this polynomial and enter it into your graphing calculator. When you do that, you will see a um, screen when you have a standard viewing screen that looks like this one here. Um, using your function for finding minimum, maximum, and minimum, and then of course the zeros of your function um, is how I got all of these elements listed on the graph. If you would like um, a tutorial on that, I did make another video, um, which you can look at how to put these things into your graphing calculator. Um, let's go ahead and move on to talk about um, how we find each of these different elements um, from the graph. First thing for your domain. Your domain is looking from left to right on the graph. So if you look from left to right, this side of the graph will keep going right and this side of the graph will keep going left. So therefore your domain is all real numbers written from negative infinity to positive infinity. For your range, you will notice that your range starts down here at the bottom of the graph and then goes everything above that. So from negative 9, which is the y value of your lowest point, to infinity, including the 9. It is continuous. There are no breaks. X-intercepts are your zeros of the function. So therefore, in this graph, it hits the x-axis at negative 2, 0, 1, and 3. Notice I've written those as a set of numbers. Okay. Y-intercept is when x is 0. When x is 0, I could plug that right into this equation. So 0 here, a 0 here, a 0 here, and a 0 here. If I simplified that, it would simply give me 0. You could also see that right here on the graph, it intersects the y-axis at 0. The end behavior is what happens at the ends of the graph. So in this graph, as x goes to positive infinity, the graph goes to positive infinity. And as x goes to negative infinity, the graph still goes to positive infinity. Hello. I'm just recording a flip chart so you can have a seat and work. Um, I'm just doing this, so. Just try to be quiet because it's recording my voice. Okay. All right, so for the um, next one, we have local minimum value and local maximum value. You have two local minimum values at negative 1.3, negative 9, and 2.3, neg comma, negative 9. Notice your absolute vi minimum value is at negative 9, using, of course, that y value for the very lowest point on your graph. Your local maximum value is up here at 0.5, comma, 1.56. And there is no absolute max because this graph keeps going up in both directions. Increasing intervals. On your graph from left to right, the graph increases here and also here. So therefore, the two intervals that represent that are negative 1.3 to negative 2.5 and from 2.3 to infinity. Your two decreasing values on the graph are from negative infinity up to one, negative 1 1.3 and then from 0.5 to 2.3. Again, using the x values for those intervals. Moving on, we then have the zeros of the function. This is a fourth degree polynomial. You know that it's a fourth degree because your highest power of the function is a four. That's where I get my degree of four. Total number of solutions should match your degree. Number of real solutions, since it crosses the x-axis four times, um, is four. And those four values are negative 2, 0, 1, and 3. Again, taken from your properties. Since there are four real solutions and a total of four, 4 minus 4 is 0, you have no imaginary solutions. And since you have none, you just write none. When you want to write a product of linear factors, you just basically take those solutions and put them right down into linear factors. So x plus 2, x plus 0, which is just x, x minus 1, and x minus 3. The 
this concludes the first page video.